we're recording. So um, hello, 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 and welcome to our team give um, call. We do calls kind of randomly, and I'm so, so super excited to share, and I'm going to share my screen, um, to have on the call tonight two grand prize fin finalists. We have Kevin here. Kevin, how do you say your last name? Because I don't want to mispronounce it. I'm awful at pronouncing stuff. It's okay. <laughs> Uh oh, you went away. So I'm hey, like, okay. Drennan? Derman. Am I saying it right? Drennan. <laughs> so he's one of the finalists. He's going to be sharing his story. Um, I'm going to let him um, introduce himself a little bit more. But he, you know, from here, from just when I'm reading this stuff, he's 46 years old. He has two teen boys. There's Andrea. Um, and I'm going to let him share his story. We also have Andrea um, Barlow, who's going to be sharing her story as well. And so the way the flow is going to go, they're going to each play have about 20 minutes to kind of kind of share their stories and their journey. And then we'll open it up um, for Q&A. So be thinking of your questions. Feel free to chat, chat them in the chat box. And for you guys that this is your first time on a team call, I want to say just welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we're so excited that you took time out of your busy schedule to um, to be on the call with us. Hi, Emily. Um, but I always start each of our pair, our calls off with a prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start us off with a prayer, and then we'll we'll hand it over to Kevin and Andrea. So, Jesus, we just thank you and we praise you for all the blessings you have bestowed on us. I thank you so much for this team and the people you've brought to us. I'm in constant awe of your generosity. I pray for each one of our coaches and customers, and ask that you bless them in a special way and help them along this journey. Help us to grow as a team and truly work together as one team that gives generously and has you as the utmost importance. Without a doubt, with you as our focus and serving others, we will achieve the greatness you have called us to be. And Jesus, we just lift up um, Kevin and Andrea to you and ask that you just fill, your, fill their hearts and their, their words with your Holy Spirit and you speak through them and you open our ears and our hearts to hear what we need to hear. And to, um, to be spoken to and inspired the way we need. And so in your name, we thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. So uh, let's see, let me, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna stop the screen share. And I'm gonna hand it over to, Kev. we're gonna start with Kevin, is that okay? Where are That's you? Right. There you are. And I'm gonna go ahead and mute. I'm gonna mute all one more time, Kevin, just to make sure everybody's muted and unmute yourself. Does that sound okay? Yeah, it's fine. Hi. Okay. All right, can you hear me? I can hear you. We're good to go. Okay. So, uh, like I said, my name is Kevin Dren. I am 46, uh, two boys. I live in New Jersey, married. Um, so, where do I start? Uh, um, so, I started my journey. 17 months ago. Um, what led up to that point um, were three things that kind of came together uh, that made my decision uh, uh, more evident. Um, at that time, my son, my youngest son was playing travel baseball and he was doing fall and winter workouts. And, you know, I was pushed, I always said push him pretty hard. And, you know, I wouldn't let him sock off during his, you know, workouts and everything. And, but then I would come home and sit on the couch, open up a bag of Doritos, eat that, eat a sleeve of cookies, maybe have some ice cream, you know? And I started thinking, I'm like, you know, I'm asking him to do all this stuff and I'm doing nothing. Around the same time, for those who have been around Beachbody at that time, Hammer and Chisel was announced. And my wife had been on her journey for about two years. And she came to me one day and said that her fellow coaches were trying to get their husbands to do it with them. And that would I be interested in if they created like a small Facebook group with just the husbands and, um, you know, interacting with them. And I was like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I wasn't motivated still. So the last thing that happened was I had my yearly checkout with my doctor. And at that time, I was close to 300 pounds. 
and you know he voiced his concern and he also said that based upon i was on high blood pressure medicine and that he was really considering me to be pre-diabetic and he wanted to start meds and right there in the office was kind of i made the decision actually and i'm like i don't want to do medication you know i said give me a couple months my wife wants to try this program let me try it out and if i come back and i'm at the same point then you know we'll we'll try it your your way so i went home and at that time was um if you saw into my picture i have cerebral palsy and it affects my left arm and leg and hammer and chisel you have to lift weights so right away i'm like okay how am i going to how am i going to do this you know and i've since i've had the cerebral palsy all my life i've had to find ways to get stuff done you know, um, and my parents played a big part of that. My parents never um, treated me any different. They always said, try. And um, I remember a story that uh, first grade, first couple of days of school, I come walking home and another boy was carrying my books. And my mom comes outside and says, Kevin, why is this boy carrying your books? And the boy goes, well, I mean, look at his hand. He can't carry them. And she's like, no, no, no. That's not going to fly. She goes, give him back the books. Get the books from the boy and everything. And and that's just been my parents, you know, the way they brought me up. Um, that these try, you know, try things, sports, you know, different activities and, and find a way to get things done. And... Uh, What I wound up doing was um, I uh, I did some research and I, I bought some cuff weights or ankle weights and you know they I think my first couple were five and ten pounds and so I used them on my left arm um, and so we started hammer and chisel we started December twenty eighth two thousand fifteen. Of course, right, right in between the holidays, right? The best time to start. Um, those first couple workouts um, were killer. Um, I, I don't know if I was bucket ready or needing the bucket, but um, I felt pretty drained at, at the end of them. Um, but I, but I. knew I had to do something. I had to do something for for myself. And, you know, I pushed through and and thank God I had my wife, you know, pushing me every day. And um, I mean, she had been trying for two years to uh, get me started. You know, every morning she would get up, come on, Kev, come on, come out and work out with me. And I just, I just wasn't there yet. And, and that's the biggest thing is if until a person is really ready, uh, they're, it's, they're not going to be successful. So I completed hammer and chisel and I lost uh, 26 pounds and 13 inches. And I was feeling, you know, amazing. And we did a few more weeks of the hammer workouts and we went on the beach body cruise. Uh, Tara was fortunate enough to be able to sell enough um, product to, to qualify and get on the trip. Um, and for those who have been on the trip or those who haven't been on the trip, uh, each morning they'll have the trainers of the different workouts do a workout. Well, Sagi from Hammer and Chisel, uh, was doing one of the workouts. And at one point he asked people who to get down into a plank. Well, I was still like 270 pounds and I wasn't ready to plank. And um, he looked up at one point to the end of the ship I was, 
and said, you know, no, he wants everyone to do it. And uh, yeah, I felt almost like he was like calling me out. So uh, I, uh, I, I think I grabbed onto the rail and, and was doing some push-ups or, or whatever. Um, so, um, so we came back from the trip and, uh, I did a couple rounds of 21 day fix extreme and that's where I got, uh, well, I got exposure to the container system, yeah, um, in hammer and chisel and continued with 21 day fix extreme and did, you know, pretty good. So I was looking for my next challenge actually a year ago now. And uh, I started talking to my wife, you know, because I really like the lifting of the weights in hammer and chisel. Um, and uh, she said, well, there's body beast that Sigi does. I said, really? I said, well, let me try, you know, some of the workouts. And uh, I did. And that was like in the June, July timeframe. I didn't commit to beast fully. And I was, I think, still following the 21 day fix uh, meal plan. And I liked it. And uh, one of the things that really convinced me was I got into Sagi's Facebook group, uh, Beast Up Legacy. And when I got in there, two things were happening. One was that people were uh, doing challenges that Sagi had given them to get to earn a spot on stage with him at Summit. Uh, for those who are on the call that don't know what Summit is, Summit is Beachbody's yearly convention, and the trainers go to uh, Summit and have individual workouts. And they normally have people in the background, just like on the videos, and the way Sigi gets the people on stages, he picks them out of his group, and he challenges people, um, and he selects various individuals. So they were doing that, and also some of them were um, getting ready to compete at Summit at for the Beachbody Classic, which is Beachbody's um, physique competition. And what I noticed was he calls his group a family, and it really is, and uh, how much support there was. Uh, I had questions about the nutrition. I had questions about the workouts and the, and the, the support was absolutely fabulous. And, um, so as I was starting my first round of beast, um, I made two goals for myself, um, by, well, by the next summit, which is the one that's coming up that I was going to do the classic and that I was going to get on stage with Sagi, or at least I was going to do everything. To get it okay, um, um, in some inches, and um, I did. Uh, Sagi added at that time two uh, workouts on demand, and he created a special calendar for that 30 day calendar. And I did that. And actually I lost 13 pounds doing that, which was uh, kind of odd. And I was still at this time trying to still grasp the whole uh, nutrition with beast because it's a little different than a lot of the other programs. Um, and then I started my second round and during the second round, uh, Sigi, announced these challenges and the first challenge that he had was he had to do a thousand uh, I'm sorry 500 push-ups uh, in an hour and he had to video it well uh, I videoed it I did 680 and and what I do is I do wall push-ups so if you imagine the wall is my hand I put my hand against it. Um, unfortunately, the video got screwed up, so I had to do it again. So I, uh, I, uh, I did another 690. And 
uh, luckily that uh, that video recorded, I was able to uh, upload it. And uh, boy, was I sore. <laughs> um, Sigig then gave, in about a week and a half, gave a nerve challenge of uh, a thousand uh, sumo squats in an hour. That was just as bad. And and we're we're sitting here, like the, you know, my friends from the crew, we're sitting here, like, how are we going to be able to do this? And we start calculating, like, you had to do like eighteen, like a, a minute or 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 some number. But the most amazing thing, and uh, my wife actually during the first one didn't quite understand it. People were going live, and we would jump on the live and be supportive of each other. And she turned to me and says, "You're going to watch them for an hour doing push-ups or doing so much squats." I said, "Yes." I said because they do it for me and, and they did. And it's like, there would be like, you know, five to 10 to 15 people. And if people were going on the same time, we were jumping back and forth, you know, and uh, giving hearts and giving thumbs up. And, and when you're seeing stuff like that on screen, when you're doing it, that, that really helps. The next challenge was you had to do a static hold, which is you had to hold your arms out of the T with weights. Uh, women were able to use two and a half to five pounds. Men had to use at least 10 pounds. And I used 10 pounds and we had to hold that for 30 minutes within the hour. So you could hold it, you know, for a minute, break for a minute. Do it. And, and uh, again, that was tough. That, that was, that was really hard. Uh, about that time I finished up. I had finished Beast. I submitted my results. And um, that's when I won the uh, monthly um, award for the Beach Body Challenge. I won $1,000. And uh, it's funny because my wife saw the email. She uh, contacted me. And, and I, I just couldn't believe that, you know, I had won. And um, so, of course, you know, I post on Facebook and everything. Everyone's saying congratulations. I come home that night and I'm sitting on the couch. I'm catching up on people's posts and thanking them. And I get a uh, private, you know, inbox and uh, I swipe it. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't think I'm, I should have swiped that. And I went into my inbox and here it was Sagi. And uh, I open it up and he says, congratulations, you know, I'm proud of you and, and everything. And uh, he's like, but I have a few questions. For those who haven't submitted their results yet, you have to pick what program uh, you're submitting for. Well, the next time you go in, that's the default. Well, I had forgotten to switch it from the 21 day fix. So I submitted again and uh, Sigi goes, the people at HQ are like, um, you know, he's been doing, he doing it for four or five weeks. He goes, no, he's been doing it for months. Well, we were conversing back and forth, and I was giving him more info about what happened. And that's when he offered me a spot on stage with him at Summit. And the spot he offered me was during what's called the super workout. The super workout is not the individual trainer workouts, but the last day of the summit in the morning outside uh, on, on a stage. Uh, each trainer has about 20 minutes to a half hour to do a workout. But everybody from the convention or from summit lines the street. Number of people that go to summit is about 25,000 people. So I'll be on stage leading a workout in front of 25,000 people. It, it absolutely blows my mind. So I met one of my goals. Um, around that time, I registered for the Classic. So that's in uh, five weeks. So I can't say I've met that goal yet. I only have registered. Um, I do have my pre-judging time. I do have my um, spray tan appointments for it, So which is kind of funny. Um, 
I'm going to interrupt you. And so for those yep. of you who don't know what the classic is, that's like, um, you know, you have bikini competition, body competition. It's, yep. it's a competition, um, bodybuilder competition. That's just yeah. body. And it's put on at Summit before, right before Summit, really. The day before yeah. Summit. And, and what's a little different is that it's men are all together, AIDS. Uh, uh, there's no brackets. It's all competing against each other. And for me and a lot of people that I, or not a lot of people, some people I know, we're just using it as a transformation celebration. Uh, I'm not ready to compete on their level just just yet. Uh, so I finished up, uh, so I was recognized in February for my results for, for, um, for the Beach Body Challenge. In March, I also won the Ultimate Transformation Monthly. Uh, so I got another $1,000. And the difference between the two, I'll explain that real quick because we're going to talk about the vote. Um, the Beach Body Challenge is for the pro, uh, you get recognized for the programs that you've done. So I got recognized for Beast, um, uh, 21 Day Fix, Extreme, and for Hammer and Chisel. The Ultimate Transformation is for the products that you use Shakeology, the performance line. Um, and, and anything else they, they kind of sell for, um, so for supplements. Um, about that time, I started Court of Force. Court of Force is the new MMA style program. I was also lifting at the same time. So I was doing double workouts, good because I really want to accelerate my weight loss so I can get ready for the classic. So um, I did that. Um, and I uh, had great results with that. Um, I actually lost in five weeks, 19 pounds. Um, and, 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 and really are maybe a little less, about 14 pounds, but, um, you know, at that size, right. You know, I was 200. Yeah, it was 14 pounds. Cause I went from 219 to 205. And, uh, so, you know, I did almost, I did more than 5%. So, which is good. Um, uh, I, just finished up my third round of beast. Um, and I was doing one cardio program, uh, a, a day and I wound up losing 19 pounds. So, so I'm trying to know what's your total. Cause I want to make sure we have time for Andrea. To yep. Finish. Yeah, I, exactly. I was going to finish my, my total as of today is 114 pounds. 114 pounds. Dang. Yeah. That's like a whole person. Yes, it is. I feel, um, just lastly, I, I, I feel like a new person. You know, um, I wrote about this today. Um, it's just a different feeling. I, uh, I'm a much happier person or, uh, overall. And, it, and it, it's really helped my home life, my work life, you know, all, all around. And, you know, the task, the easy task or the, you know, the day-to-day -day tasks that were hard to do now, are much easier to do now. And uh, honestly, I owe it to Beachbody. I owe a lot of it to Sagi. Um, the, the man is un unbelievable. And um, I just can't wait to meet him in, uh, what, five weeks. So. You deserve to meet him. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited for you. So does any, um, I don't know if we should do a few questions now or wait till the end. How have y'all been doing it on your calls? Um, it does, it, either way, either way is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead. It's Andrea on. Can you unmute? Let me unmute her. Unmute. Andrea, are you there? If you have somebody has a question, you can type it in while we make this transition. But are you going to stick around? For the yes, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And we'll definitely have, um, you can ask questions now. If Andrea is not quite ready. I'm ready. <laughs> ready? Okay, let's go, girl. Um, so should I give you a brief intro? Where your, I'll share her picture with you guys. So I'm gonna share my screen. And um, I don't even know if I say your name right. I you saying Andrea, Andre? I, I respond to anything with an A, cause I've got everything. I work in healthcare, so I get Angela, Amanda, Angela. <laughs> hey, look at this girl. I mean, dang, look at her. So I can't wait to hear this right. And then for those of you that maybe jumped on late, let me share Kevin's again. Oops. Um, where's Kevin? Kevin. 
Here's Kevin before and after. I'm gonna make that bigger if you guys can see it. So 118 pounds, I think is what he said. It's crazy. So Andrea, um, how about you? Uh, tell me how to pronounce your name first. So I'm not saying it right. Uh, Andrea. 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 <laughs> yep, just the Andrea. Andrea. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna let her share her story. Um, just take it away, girl. Okay. So basically, I um. Wait, hold on. I thought my screen. Went. My share. No, I I thought my screen went blank. <laughs> All right, there I am. No, for some reason, my script, my phone was geeking out. So, okay, so my name is Andrea. I am actually from um, Pen uh, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure where everybody's from, but I am from Collegeville, Pennsylvania. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, which is Amish country. <laughs> um, I have been with, on a journey and a health and fitness journey for the past two and a half years with Beachbody and I have lost in total since my heaviest weight uh, 215 pounds 170 pounds with uh, Beachbody so That's insane so I'll give you this sh the short because I have this like very uh, onion layered story because I had um, a very big mental emotional transformation and I think that I had to go through the mental emotional transformation and once I went through that 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 kind of took care of the outward transformation so I'll share the shortened version of it since it's so layered but I basically I have been on a weight loss journey um, well I've had a problems with weight starting since I was about 13 years old but leading up to that, I came from a very messy childhood um, background. So when I did the shortened version of it, my parents got divorced when I was five years old. I had a babysitter that was, um, that she was a fill-in babysitter to my regular babysitter for the summer. And she was uh, abusive towards me. Um, my dad was an alcoholic when I was younger. After my mom and dad got divorced, my mom moved off to Michigan. And then I was also bullied and kind of um, rejected in school. So I, I grew up in this very chaotic environment where my parents were fighting all the time. My, my dad at the time was there. He was the, the alcoholic that would black out and, and say really mean things and was very manipulative towards me. And he was also came from a military background. So he was very militized with me as far as schedules and things needing to be done a certain way. So I kind of like grew up in this need to be a perfect state and not feeling that love and acceptance and rejection at a very young age. And all of those little, I want to say, pieces to the puzzle from when I, time I was a, a young child kind of fueled or planted the seeds to what would become a, an adult crisis for me. So when I was about 13 years old, after I had lost a significant amount of weight, I was, um, so at the end of the eighth grade year, one of the boys that used to pick on me said something really mean, he told me that I was never going to be pretty, that I was fat and ugly, and I went on to lose about 75 pounds that summer with Ty Bell. So I kind of think I always had like that at home workout like in my blood, and because I grew up out in the middle of nowhere, my dad sheltered me because I was, you know, the weight he was I that was my only choice of how I could work out so I lost the weight and then what happened was all the kids that used to pick on me and this particular boy that you know had insulted me suddenly everybody loved me suddenly everybody started accepting me and then my dad started parading me around and showing like showing me off to everybody else in a way that he never did before. So I started latching onto that need for love and acceptance. And 
I was started getting a lot of anxiety about losing that love and acceptance. So I was watching a Lifetime movie one day when I was about 13 years old, and it was about a gymnast and what she would do to maintain her weight to be a gymnast, to compete. And she was bulimic. And I remember watching that and thinking, she can eat a lot of food, and that's how she, that's how she fixes it, is she purges it. And I tried it for the first time when I was 13 years old. And I went on to have that eating disorder up until I was, uh, actually, up until September of this last year. Even on my health journey with Beachbody, I relapsed um, three times with my eating disorder when I went. But the third time, I realized that I needed to have serious help with it. And I, I started going to counseling to get help for it. I'd always been in counseling prior to that, but it, it, my heart and my mind was never in a place to really be accepting of the help that was in the tools that the counselor was giving to me. So through my teenage years, what ended up happening after I had this eating disorder is I ended up moving in with my mom when I was about 15 years old. I met a boy, and this boy that I met was from a really bad part of, of Philadelphia, and I get, got in with the wrong crowd, and I started replacing my addictive behavior with binging and purging with drugs and alcohol. So I started drink. I started partying, and that partying led me to a pretty traumatic experience when I was about, I want to say 20. I had a party at my house, and I was, um, I was raped, and uh, after that, that scared the crap out of me so badly that I ran from that lifestyle. I left that toxic relationship that I was in, and that's when my real health crisis with food started because all of those pains and hurts and demons and everything that I went through in my past, I was blanketing it with food, and I was feeding it with food, and I was still purging it. So I ended up meeting my fiance now, and we ended up having my son when I was 25. It was the first time since I was 13 years old that I did not purge. I knew I wanted to have a healthy pregnancy, so I, you know, did the best that I could to make sure that that pregnancy would be healthy. After I had cut, now when I had Kyle, um, I was about. 250, maybe 270 pounds after I had Kyle. And shortly, about three years after me having Kyle, um, I started slipping back into my eating disorder behaviors. And then me and Billy ended up um, almost becoming homeless. The, our landlord was selling his, the, our, the house we were living in, and he gave us three weeks to vacate the premises. And in the process of giving us three weeks to vacate the premises, my fiancé lost his job. I had a serious nervous breakdown. I was packing all of our belongings, and I sold all. I was also at the time running a photo. I was a, going to school at the Art Institute for Photography, and I sold, and I, was, I would do wedding photography. I sold about probably $3,000 worth of photography equipment for enough money to buy a moving truck and pay for our stuff to go into a storage unit. And I moved in with my mom. My mom allowed us to move in with her and she had, she had a base, she had a basement that was kind of partitioned off. So it was like, it's an apartment and we'd been with her for the last few years in which Praise Jesus, I think we're getting ready to buy our first house. So, <laughs> but after, shortly after we moved in with my mom, about a year, about a year into us living here, um, I started dabbling with Weight Watchers because I wanted to lose weight. And 
then I had this great conjured up idea that I was going to try to get on extreme weight loss. And in the past, I had actually submitted an application to The Biggest Loser. They, they never picked me. Shame on them. I guess they're feeling sorry now. But <laughs> so um, I ended up finding out that I was pregnant with my daughter. Surprise! It was a surprise. We were not trying. She was the, the child from God because we used protection. And surprise, here came Emma the day after New Year's. So. I got pregnant with Emma, and shortly after getting pregnant with Emma, I want to say about three months into my, three or four months into my pregnancy, I started gaining weight a lot. And when I got pregnant with Emma, I was about 280, about 280, I want to say. And me and the doctor were going around and around because she, she was accusing me of overeating food, and I'm telling her I'm not overeating food. And finally, they ran some tests, and they found out that my thyroid was not working properly. Now. Prior to all of this, um, a year before I, when I said I was started dabbling with Weight Watchers, I had actually what had actually made me start dabbling with Weight Watchers and really, you know, trying to do something about my weight was the fact that I was getting echocardio stress tests and had halter monitors hooked up to me because I was having these extreme heart palpitations that they could not figure out what was wrong with me. And I act, they, they did find out it was some kind of minor heart arrhythmia, but I acclimate some of that heart difficulty that I was having from the repeated binging and purging that I did because bulimia will cause heart palpitation issues um, with repeated abuse of it. So um, I ended up... About six months into my pregnancy, I had gained probably almost 75 pounds. When I birthed Emma, at, which was September 2nd of 2014, I weighed 375 pounds. I had gained probably about 125 pounds that entire pregnancy. It was the heaviest I had ever reached. It was three months before I committed to my Beach body journey. And I remember that's when life really started becoming challenging for me. I couldn't walk up the stairs without taking breaks. I couldn't tie my shoes. Um, I, could, I remember sh chucking my sh shoes across the room because I got so frustrated. I, I could tie them on my lap, but then I couldn't fit over my stomach to put them on my feet. So I threw my shoes. It almost hit my poor, poor fiance in the head. And I said, that's it. I'll just start wearing Crocs. So I started wearing Croc shoes because I couldn't tie my own shoes. Couldn't fit behind the steering wheel of my own car. So instead of, um, what did I do? I went out and bought a bigger car so I could fit behind the steering wheel of my car. Silly, right? Why not just lose weight? Instead, spend thousands of dollars, upgrade your car. So... <laughs> Then I was following my coach now, Crystal. I had been following her for years on um, her blog. And I remember her, you know, always posting stuff about Turbo Fire and this magical stuff called Shakeology. I actually tried Herbal Life before I tried Beach Body. I tried the Herbal Life shakes because I'm like, oh, them damn Shakeology. That stuff's expensive. I'm not, I'm, I am a resistor. And at the time, we didn't have um, much money because I just had Emma. I was unemployed. I wasn't getting unemployment because I didn't qualify for unemployment because I didn't accrue enough time before I had Emma to take FMLA. So I lost my job. So the Herbal Life shakes just didn't do it for me. I'm like, this is not the magical gold powder, bells and whistles that Crystal always talks about. I wanted the bells and whistles. I didn't get it. So then I see this Black Friday. She posts about this Black Friday sale. And I said to my mom, Mom, you have to get me this program. I don't want anything else for Christmas. Don't get me anything else. I mean it. I just want you to get me this program. I wanted to get Turbo Fire. So she went to go get the program for me, and it was sold out. So the program she ended up getting for me was Les Mills Combat. Uh, two and a half weeks later, we ended up taking my son to Hershey Park for his birthday, 
we take him to Hershey Park every year for his birthday. And he asked me one question that changed the course of my life forever. He said, Mommy, why do you get on roller coasters with, but why does daddy get on roller coasters with me, but you never do? And I was sitting there like contemplating how do I explain this to my son in, in a way that makes sense to a four year old that mommy's stomach's too big, the bar's not gonna fit over her stomach. So then something inside of me said, Andrea, you're missing out moments on moments with your son. This is just crazy. So when we got home, I said to Kyle, you remember that question you asked mommy? He said, yeah. About the rides? I said, yes. I'm sorry mommy never got on roller coasters with you, but I promise you next year mommy will. That felt like a better response to give him than giving him one in, in which was filled with excuses. So the next day, okay, you would think, oh, great, you, you're committed to your journey, right? Wrong. Because up until that day, I never truly, I knew how bad off my health crisis was. I knew how heavy I was because I knew how much I weighed once I had Emma. But I never faced the feelings and the emotions of how trapped my health crisis actually made me feel and how trapped my pants was making me feel. So when I weighed myself and I stood on the scale in the bathroom, I had a nervous breakdown in that bathroom. I screamed and yelled the most awful obscenities at myself in front of the mirror. I, I share this candidly and I share this because I need you to know that as a coach, how, how impactful your job is. I took an extension cord and a knife in that bathroom when my newborn daughter and son were sleeping, taking a nap in the next room. And I didn't know what I was gonna to use to kill myself with. I felt so trapped that I felt like the only way out was to take my life because losing that much weight that I had no idea how I was going to do it seemed impossible. And I felt so overwhelmed by all of my failures that I had had up until that point because I failed at everything. I failed at getting my college degree. I failed at keeping a roof over my family's head. I failed at losing more than 50 pounds every time I tried to lose weight. I failed at get kicking my eating disorder. I failed at not be never doing drugs and drinking. And, you know, I, I blamed myself for all these failures and I felt so immense shame and hurt for myself. And I just wanted to end my life. And in that moment, my daughter cried and I dropped the knife. And I said to myself out loud, these exact words, what the fuck is wrong with you, Andrea? Just fight for your life and try. I told myself that this would be the time that I would try and never look back. And that every day that I tried was each moment one step closer to me moving away from the prison that I felt like I was trapped in. With tear, tears in my eyes, I walked and pushed play on that workout. I don't remember the workout. can't tell you how well it went. But I can tell you at the end of that workout, I felt so powerful that I wanted to feel that way forever. I funneled every pain, everything that I hurt, all of the, the past hurts and pains and frustrations I felt in that 30 minutes. I fought it out in that workout. And at the end of that, I made a promise to myself that I would not give up, that this would not be the time that I got so close to giving up and taking my own life by my own hand that I was not going to give up this time. And, you know, life, I think God has a funny way 
of preparing us. You know, you, you hear that God put you in certain situations to prepare you for your future and really what you're meant to do. And you don't really fully believe that when you're in the in midst of, you know, going through that struggle. But I fully believe I was supposed to grow up with an alcoholic father. I was supposed to be raped. I was supposed to have, lose a friend to suicide tragically. I was supposed to be in a tragic car accident and a, a tragic fire when I was a teenager. I was supposed to be in a tornado and a hurricane. I was supposed to grow up without my mother. I was supposed to be bullied. I was supposed, I was meant to be tortured. Because when it counted the most for me to save my own damn life, I knew how to do it because my life had already prepared me as a survivor. Because I had already fought through such horrible adversity and survived so much that losing weight was something I could do. If I could go through all of that, I could get through the, the hard. So in the year, first year that I lost 100 pounds with Beachbody, that was not easy by any means. I won't be the one to tell you that it was easy. But I'll tell you why it wasn't easy. Was be, you know the, the reason it wasn't easy is because it was filled with adversity for the same reasons that my life filled me with adversity. My journey filled me with adversity. In the first year of my journey, they told me my daughter was going to need emergency surgery for uh, misdiagnosed Hirschsprung's disease. It turned out not being that and that she had celiac. Thank God. Then after that, my mother-in-law got hospitalized and we found out she was a hoarder secretly. We had to do a full-scale renovation in the middle of the blazing summer and here I was four months into my journey. I had to, she lived two hours away from us. I had to pack all of my food and I had to stream my workouts outside on top of a dumpster propped up on a dumpster in the middle of a hundred degree weather while cars were driving down the street. What is this crazy girl doing? Um, she's doing jumping jacks in the middle of the yard and um, who, who's she? And then we got through that. And I thought, well, thank God I finally made it through some, some really hard stress. And then my mom was rushed off to the hospital in September of 2015, exactly a year from when I had my daughter, exactly nine months into my journey, exactly three months from the promise that I had held for my son of which I had already lost 75 pounds. Here I was, the universe and God was testing me. How bad do you want to make to your life change? And how bad do you want to fulfill that promise for your son? They rushed my mom off for emergency surgery to remove a brain tumor. My world stopped. For in two weeks, my world stopped. I don't remember those two weeks. But I remember I didn't let myself give up. I watched her fight through. And she came out. It came out to be, you know, that it wasn't cancerous. Thank God. It, of all the brain tumors it could have been, it was the one brain tumor that 90% of the time doesn't turn out to be cancerous. But we didn't know that at the time. And if I would have given up then, I would have undid all of my progress for something that would have turned out as good news. So I ended up moving on to try to do Insanity Max 30. And I ended up not having luck with Insanity Max 30 because I've also been a nursing assistant since I've um, been. 16 years old, and I have, degener I have degenerative um, discs in L2 and L5 of my back. So Insanity Max 30 and Master's Hammer and Chisel kept flaring up my back, and I could not do these, 
these more advanced programs. I could get through 21 Day Fix, but I couldn't get through with these other programs. And I got so frustrated and so discouraged because I had an inner athlete inside of me that wanted to just seize these workouts and I couldn't do them. So I ended up doing Ultimate Reset. And Ultimate Reset ended up changing everything for me. I found out that my body was very um, inflammatory to grains and um, dairy and certain red meats massively to the point where I just, I won't even touch them now because it sends my body into a tizzy. After I did that, then my fitness journey started getting a lot. Then I could do 21 Day Fix Extreme. Then I was able to do some of the more advanced programs. I was able to get through 22 Minute Arc Corps. And then I was able to get through um, uh, a month of Insanity Max 30. And then how did that get this whole beach body challenge thing come into place? So after I lost the first 100 pounds with my son, I started dreaming really big. I started thinking, wow, now I have this body that lost 100 pounds. What, what more can I do with my life? Now I'm not trapped. Now I can actually put shoes on. Now I can run. Now I can do this. Now I can do that. So I made this vision board, but it wasn't a vision board like I want to have a car. I want to have um, make this amount of money. It was a motivation board of things that I wanted myself to be able to do as far as achieve in my fitness. That if I were able to achieve these things, it would blow my mind. And on that board was Beachbody Classic because I was petrified to put on a bikini. So I thought I need to do Beachbody Classic because I need to liberate my mind. So I put Beachbody Classic on there. And then I put Beachbody Challenge up there because after I heard David McLean from our Super Saturdays talk about the Beachbody Challenge, and after Crystal had planted this seed in my head about the Beachbody Challenge early on into my fitness journey, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I can win the whole Beachbody Challenge one day. So I thought, I'll put that on my board because if I actually achieve it, it'll blow my mind. So then, you know, David starts bringing in these guest speakers in this joint challenge group that we're running, and it's Carmen and Justin Wells, who were the pre or last year's Beach Body Challenge winners. And I end up talking to them more privately behind the scenes, and they're, they're trying to convince me to submit my results to the Beach Body Challenge. Everybody's, Andrea, are you going to submit your results? Are you going to submit your results? Are you going to Fine. So I started working on, you know, typing up my responses to submit my results, but I was petrified to submit my results because winning the Beach Body Challenge was never enough motivation for me, especially for the money. You would think, how could $100,000 not motivate you? It didn't motivate me because I was, I've never been motivated by money. And I was, that, that never motivated me to work my business either because I wasn't motivated by ranks or money because I'm a very selfless person. I'm like a Mother Teresa. I'll give everything to the world. Like I just, it's who I am. And finally my son said to me, Mommy, God told me, that you're really close to winning the beach body challenge. There's this boy again. God told you that, Kyle? Yes. And then he said, You're going to take me on a tour of all the best amusement parks in the world, right? Because who doesn't want to go on a tour of the best amusement parks, right? So then I got to thinking, and David McLean said one key thing to me. He said, Andrea, you have been through some of the most powerful shit that anybody I've ever heard. And you've had a su successful fitness journey through stuff designed to tear a person apart. And you're holding all of that inspiration to yourself and being selfish with it. And I thought, you know what? He's right. And, you know, then just... Finally, I realized this is about inspiring people of what's possible, that I have a story of impossibility that became possible, so that it became 
my mission to inspire men and women across the world that you could achieve the most impossible, mind-blowing things when everything is stacked against you. And I dug my feet into the ground and decided no matter what happens, I'm going to try to fight to that stage. So I submitted my results. And I was scared to death because I knew that once I submitted my results, that that meant telling my story. And I was afraid to tell my story. I was afraid to share, you know, all the story behind it, my story, because sharing it meant reliving it. And reliving it meant, you know, reliving those feelings and emotions again. But I was willing to do it because I knew that it would save somebody's life out there, somebody out there. So after I submitted my results, I ended up getting recognized as a monthly winner um, the, the next month. <laughs> I top jumped all over my house at the time, <sighs> which, by the way, yes, I forgot to mention. So we were living, once I submitted my results, we, were, we had temporarily moved out, found a house to rent that I would then have to turn around and move out of um, right before I got flown out to Beachbody headquarters because I had a slumlord and our kitchen floor was sinking. Yes. So the adversity continued. It didn't stop. And then after that, my one of my friends that was like a sister to me ended up tragically passing away five days before I needed to be flown out to Beachbody headquarters to tell this most inspirational story. She passed away from a heroin overdose. I had no idea how I was going to go to Beachbody headquarters and tell this inspiring story with such a heavy heart. Here I was, we just moved out of our house, that what should have been, it was practically condemned. Back living with my mom again. And here I lost a friend that was, you know, tra tragically to heroin. And, you know, before I lost her, a few months prior to that, I actually had a screaming match with her and told her that I wasn't going to talk to her because. Um, I grew up with people in my family that did heroin, and I had lost my cousin, um, actually, uh, a year before my fitness journey, I lost my cousin to heroin. So, you know, I felt really guilty for losing her because I felt like I didn't save her. It's not been easy for me. Even now, you know, we've been trying to buy a house since August and we couldn't, you know, we kept getting rejected from buying the house. And, you know, now my mom is actually going through some testing again because there's a possibility there might be, be something going on with the pieces of the brain tumor that was left behind. My stepfather is being tested. He failed his neurological tests. Um, and he's being, they found a lump on the back of his head. So they're being, he's being tested more extensively for what might be cancer. And my fiance's mother um, is actively dying. All while trying to maintain results, compete in the Beachbody Challenge, and prepping for the Beachbody Classic. So, how the heck do I commit, how the heck do I keep myself going through all the adversity, through all the things going on wrong around me? One thing that I learned early on in my journey with, and, and just life, what life taught me is that you can't control what goes on around you. You can let everything spin out of control around you. But there are certain things within your choices and in your belief system and which you still have control over. And in those moments of everything being out of control, I use it as opportunity 
for me to become more powerful in that moment. I use it as opportunity to not give up because the old me would say, well, life is getting hard. Eat food. Because eating that food temporarily tasted good and it temporarily tasting good make me feel better and that temporarily feeling better made everything else that was making me feel bad go away. And it was a vicious cycle. So I won't let myself go back into that vicious cycle. It, you know, the thing is, is no matter what you do, as far as anything that you aspire towards, you can achieve anything that you want to achieve in your business, in your life, in your fitness, but you have to be willing to do the hard through the hard. You have to be willing to say to life, to life, it's okay for you to be, to treat me badly life, but I'm not going to treat myself badly. You know, and I think that that was probably the most powerful lesson for me through this whole journey was that I had to learn how to love myself amongst life not loving me. So I want to open it up to let you guys ask me questions. So I was going to do, um, I have a list of questions, but I want guy, you guys to, to type in the chat if you have any other questions. Um, and I'll play off of what you just said. And that is, how did you, like through the journey, how did you learn to love yourself? You're like, that's what the whole call was about. But like, was there one, I'm sure there was many things, but was there, um, like one of the questions I had was, what personal development impacted you the most and which one did you start with? You know, so. <laughs> so the very first personal development book I ever read was You Are a Badass. That one really impacted me. Um, then the second most impactful book for me was Fervent. It is uh, a book um, based off of the movie War Room. So if you're faithful, it is, it, it, what it is, is it's a book about teaching you how um, Satan will attack all areas of your life through your family, through your blessings, things like that. So fervent was really impactful for me, but probably the most impactful book that really changed me um, was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> I have that one on my list to read. It is a must because it is totally like it, it, it totally teaches you how to be calm amongst all of this circus in your life. Now, the book that I'm reading right now that is like woeing me to death is um, fifth, The 50th Law by um, 50 Cent. Uh, it's about 50 Cent how. He built his empire, his business. If you are an entrepreneur, like you're in this for a business, 50th law, hands down, because he did the impossible through enough, like a life designed for him to not achieve. So definitely. And then the, the podcast, there's two podcast series. I'm a podcast junkie. And the two podcast series that are like my go-tos are Lewis Howe's um, ah, School of Greatness and Neo Sobo's I'm Not You. Now, Neo Sobo's I'm Not You podcast has totally changed me as far as a coach. It's what made me feel confident enough and to coach. And it's what made me feel less fearless. Like, he, I think he's been the most impactful to me in my entire personal development life. Very cool. Uh, so I had a question here for Kevin that was typed up by Janice. Um, can, you, can you type some of those up, Andrea, in the chat? Yes. Yes. Because he said, what was the podcast again? Um, so Kevin, are you unmuted? Yeah, you are. Uh, I don't know if you had time to read Janice's question. She said, I know your transfer transformation was, com was a complex process. Any tips for your rough times? How did you push through? 
on those days? For example, when you questioned yourself and your ability, um, or were you just tired and over, were you, when you were just tired and overwhelmed? Wow. Um, I still get that. Um, it doesn't get any easier. You know, I used to, when I was, you know, 300 pounds, I used to be on TV, you know, uh, people fit saying how they struggle. And I couldn't understand that because I'm like, you, you know, you look at you and look at me. Um, it, it is a struggle. Um, it is a struggle to, to stay on your nutrition. It's a struggle to get in your workouts, you know, to get enough sleep um, and balance everything in your life. Um, but if you go back to why you started and just take a moment, you're not feeling it and remember your whys. For me, it was quickly like, I, I have to keep going. And it's, you know, you might have long-term goals, but you should set yourself some short-term goals too. You know, um, I was just doing the cardio challenge from Max 30 the other day. And, you know, Sean T is like, you know, by the end, I want you to get all the way through 30 minutes. But, you know, each time you do this, if you get a little bit better, you know, that's a victory. And, and you should celebrate those. And to me, that, that's what you have to keep on doing. You have to keep things in perspective. You have to keep pushing yourself to, to your goals. But you, ha you, you really have to remember why you started and what, and what keeps you going. And that will push you through. So I love it, love it, love it. I totally agree because um, I still struggle. Like I've been the I've been the in shape person my whole life, but I struggle. Like I struggle with depression, and that that workout is my antidepressant. Like it's my medicine, you know. And I feel like it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter your size or your journey. Like we all have our struggles, and um, so yeah, it, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> We figure out how to play our mind mind games and how to uh, and how important those workouts are to us, if that makes sense. So, I have a few more questions that we already had um, typed up, and people, you keep asking questions in the chat. It's fine. So this goes to both of you. It doesn't, um, and I don't know how involved your coaches were. You, Andrea, you mentioned yours a little bit, but that's one of the biggest challenges I know for me is like planting that seed in people and giving that them the belief that they can really do this like how did your coach approach you to it was it just planting a seed because i feel like i plant seeds but i don't know how to like really like give them the vision and the i don't know they have to want it themselves but is this question making sense like any tips there how how did they approach you well i mine was inside my house right so it's my wife <laughs> so mine was a little bit easier right um uh, and I, he was just there day in and day out, just reinforcing the the things she was trying to teach me. And, you know, reminding me, like, I remember the hammer and chisel. So I started 300 pounds. First week, I think I lost like seven or eight pounds. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. You know, uh, I was seven, eight pounds every week. This is going to be uh, no problem. Second week, I didn't lose anything. And I'm like, all right, what did I do wrong? And honestly, if, at that point, if I didn't have a strong coach, I don't know if I would have kept on going. You know, and and Tara just said, listen, your body is going to do that. It's it's adjusting. And in the next week, I lost a whole bunch. So, you know, it, the the biggest the, the biggest thing I, I I realized about coaching is that the coach you're as a coach, you're not going to know the answer. You're you're not going to know the answer all the time. And a coach is someone who's going to go through the same struggles as you. Uh, is dealing with the same kind of life issues you are at work, you know, home life, you know, relationships, whatever it is. And at least that coach can relate to you. 
and will help you find the answers to what you need versus like just you know what the plan says because that might not just be a fit and that's how i approach um i don't necessarily coach someone right this second but anyone who's asked for my advice that's what i try to do is find out what makes what's important to them, what makes them tick, what works for them, and then try to work with that so they can be successful. Thank you. I think, I think with, uh, with Crystal, Crystal, I, I can't see, I start, since I bought combat, or my mom bought combat for me, I wasn't in a challenge group right away. Um, but what she did do is she reached out to me and said, hey, how's combat going for you? And I said, Oh, I've been doing it for a month. Oh, you have? So I, I kind of was like a go-getter, I think, at that point, because I was so like, I can't do this with my life anymore. But I tried to give up a lot. Like, poor Crystal and I have had wars behind the scenes where, and, you know, we kind of like I, I'm very like honest with people and I'm very forward <laughs> so I would de say like to her like why aren't you checking in with me or I need so I was always like very vocal with her as far as what I wanted or needed um but one thing that I am noticing as a theme within my own fitness communities because I, I noticed that people will they'll start and they kind of fall off is the one thing that I think as coaches that is so important, more important for us than teaching people how to lose weight and giving them tools is teaching them how to be resilient. I think resilience is probably what saved me through this whole journey. So what I have people start out with right away when they're starting their fitness journey is, okay, I want you to give it to me straight right now what your unhealthy life and what your, like, get honest. Like, I want people to rip off the Band-Aid and get honest with what got them in their health crisis to begin with. Because let's be honest, if this journey is about self-awareness and the more that we can make our challengers and our, you know, be self-aware of what got them into their health crisis to begin with, the more they begin to start focusing on the mindset and the emotional side of the journey. So once I have them do that, I have them set small weekly goals. Okay, let's hit one nutritional goal that you want to hit this week and one fitness um, achievement goal that you would like to hit this week. And then as the things happen inside the group, as far as like, let's say something happens in their life, I don't let them disappear. If they start, you know, not posting inside the group and they just fall off, I reach out to them. Okay. You signed up for a fitness change. I love you. I will be the nag. Tell me to go away if you want me to, but I love you and I want to know how I can help you, what's going on. And then if they tell me that, you know, oh, I'm struggling and such and such happened, I say, okay, how can we, what can we, how can we get back on track? What is the first thing that you need to do right now that'll, that will help you take back control of your health and fitness and let's start there let's start with that one thing and i think the more we could teach people to be resilient and focus on the choices the habits and the beliefs then everything else takes care of itself you know sharing crystal was very heavy with personal development i mean she was like a personal development nazi like jamming it down my throat Nazi status, okay? And I was very resistive. I was that person like, don't tell me what to do because my dad used to tell me everything to do and you're going to tell me what to do. I'm not going to listen to you. But then finally I started, you know, listening because she would post nuggets and tidbits of personal development inspiration inside our team page 
And it was like baiting me to want to read more and want to do more personal development. So if you want to get your challengers really more engaged into what they're doing, share personal development tidbits. Um, another thing that I'm noticing that they love is if you do like a daily go live where you go live for like five minutes and it's actually great accountability for yourself. So schedule yourself in the morning to listen to a quick podcast. That's what I do. A quick podcast or um, audible and I'll listen to something for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then the inspiration that I pull from that personal development, I go live with that in my challenge group or the team page because I can't expect them to do the personal development. So I'm going to bring the damn personal development right to you. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I don't know if we have too much more time. I know we're over time here. Um, I have two more questions on here. And sure. Is, um, one, cause I know nutrition is huge and I know both of you drink psychology and stuff, but any meal, uh, meal prep tips, because that seems to always be a struggle with people, the nutrition plans and any tips as far as keep it simple. <laughs> I keep it simple. How I eat, literally eat the the same thing for breakfast and lunch every day. Yes. Um, and what I actually have people do, where people really start um, failing at in their nutrition, is they basically change everything that they eat. They think they have to change everything. So the more that you can fill on a piece of paper, even if you fill on a piece of paper unhealthy things that you eat, replace it with the fixed approved item. So let's say every Tuesday night your family eats spaghetti. Well, you don't have to give up spaghetti night. Just make the fixed approved version of your spaghetti night. So the best thing that you can do with your nutrition is take what you eat now and learn how and look for the fix approved recipes to what you already eat now. Great one. Um, yeah. Just real quick. I mean, I'm with Andrea. I mean, um, I've had the same breakfast for uh, six months now. Um, I eat, I eat uh, four or five, I eat five times a day. Um, four, uh, two of the meals are basically the same. Um, and I've had those, which is basically, I make broccoli and uh, cauliflower rice. Um, uh, and, uh, I, and, and a tip, uh, either a, uh, crock pot, slow cooker or an Instapot. Um, uh, they, uh, those absolutely save time. Um, the Instapot. Um, I do shredded chicken. I, I put six chicken breasts in there. I cook for 38 minutes with some seasoning on it, and they're done. They come out. I shred it. I'm done. That, that's my protein. And, yeah. Uh, rotisserie uh, chickens, too. Oh, my gosh. I lit off a rotisserie chicken. Like, that's like, because I have probably two, two or three of those I keep in my refrigerator, and I can constantly shred chicken down and make a quick meal out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, those kind of things. I mean, my wife and I spend two to three hours on Sunday and prep for the week. We even got to the point where my boys are teenagers. They'll come home. We actually started um, food prepping their stuff. So when they come home, they can have something that they can healthy instead of just snacking. I love it. So, Kevin, did the Shakeology help with your diabetes and maintaining your glucose level? Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 well, I, when my wife started two years ago, um, I started drinking it. So I had that already in the system. And, um, I mean, I, I have it every day. And there will be times I get that night and I'm like, you know, on the weekends. On the weekends, sometimes we get a little busy. I don't make it. But, you know, every day around 10 or 11 a.m., I'll have it, you know, during the week. And uh, it's just, again, it's just one of my week meals. So last, um, I guess two more questions here, but last question is, um, oh, well, this one, I think you guys answered because I don't think either one of you started with knowing that you were going for the Beachbody Challenge. And so we have a few people 
on the call who actually like, I think they should submit their results and they are in the middle of their journey to be like, finally. I mean, you know, they have, they, they submit every, submit every month. Submit yeah. Month. Submit. Okay. So submit. here, here I, I want to give you the lowdown really quick on how you do this. Okay. So take really good before pictures. That's what I was really, saying. You have them really professionally done? That was, one of, that was my question, actually. You go have them professionally done, your before pictures? I actually use, um, I have, well, see, I have a, a, it's a Canon camera, so it's a DSLR. So I have somebody take, like, I don't use a cell phone to take my pictures. I use a good camera. So if you can get your hands on a digital camera to take your before pictures, that's even better. And, you know, make sure the lighting is good. And make sure that they can see your face. And also, I know this is going to be hard. And I, and I even do this with my people when they're starting out. And I say, I know that they're coming from, you know, a very morbidly obese state. I say, look, I know this is going to be really hard for you, but I want you to take the best damn celebratory goodbye picture that you have. And I want you to do it as candidly as you can, meaning shorts and a bra. And I'll tell you why, because that will be your winning picture because that will, that, will, that picture will get you paid. Exactly. So, you want to win $100,000? You want to win $25,000? You want to win $1,000? You want to win $6,000? Take a picture that is going to do that for you. So that's number one. Also, submit your results every month, even if you're in the middle of a program. Why? Because you want them to follow your journey. You want them to follow your story. They love, it allows them to form a relationship with you as far as, knowing who you are. So maybe they don't pick you every month. Don't internalize that as them rejecting you. They're actually watching you and they'll pick you when they're like, okay, she's ready. Let's pick her. And they'll, then they'll pick you. Sorry. And, and the other part of this is, and I know this is going to be hard, but you need to be sharing your story on Facebook. You have to, and I'll tell you why. Because they do not pick people based off of who lost the most weight. They pick people based off of capacity to inspire. Uh, and, you know, I know that it's scary to share the things that you want to share, but think about this. How inspired are you by listening to me tell my story about I almost killed myself? Your darkness is somebody else's light and hope. And that means so much to Beachbody headquarters because that's what they want. They want that raw emotional story. And if even if you don't have that raw emotional story, share those emotions that you felt when you felt your worst off. You can share that, and that in itself is inspiring enough. So you definitely want to be sharing your progress pictures at least once a month and tagging the Beach Body Challenge to your posts because you want them to get in your radar and see your Facebook timeline. So that would be my biggest tips on the Beach Body Challenge. Love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think that was that summed up a lot of their questions probably. Um, Kevin, do you have anything to add to that before we? It, no, I, I mean, Andrea is, uh, nailed it. <laughs> but, well, she knows she's, uh, I, I never had to see planet, you know, I was doing this for, for me and, um, uh, I didn't post that much on my Facebook until the fall of last year. And the reason I did it was because Sigi had given a challenge in his group to post not only what we post in the group, but post on our wall. And I started doing that. And then that's when things changed for me as far as being, seeing, you know, I knew the people in the, beat, in the Beast group and they knew me, but no one else outside of that group knew or saw my impact. So once I started doing that, I started getting a lot more feedback. 
And now I've actually taken it to other fitness groups where it's not beach body. And, and I learned from that. I learned from those people, but now it, it's my stories out there. I post every day. Um, I, in fact, as soon as we get off this call, I have to post my workout from today. Um, so, um, it, it's just one of those things where I wasn't ready in the beginning to, to post it. Um, but I can see Andrea's point about if that is your goal for the beach body challenge and you want to go for that, I think when they came and saw me and saw that I had been posting since the fall, I think that made a difference. Yeah, I think that I agree. Yeah. So those are great tips. I think um, we are way over time. We're 30 minutes over time. This must be an hour call. Um, so thank you both. Andrea, I don't think she already, um, I think she had to go, but thank you both so, 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 so much for giving us, giving us of your time. Um, guys, the, they are like, their voting is going, is going on right now until June. Every day. Every, yeah. Every day until June 12th. You can vote every day. Um, so go vote for Kevin and Andrea. Um, if you haven't voted yet today, go do it. Oh, go ahead. And I have two other people. Um, Sarah um, H., who is the female, um, is a friend of mine. She's in Ultimate Transformation. And Carl M., which is, he's up for the 100 grand as well. What we did was we kind of joined forces. Uh, we kind of liked each other's story. Carl, just real quick, he uh, did it all by himself. He really didn't have the, the beach body community. He did it all by himself and uh, truly amazing. Uh, he's lost, I think, over 100 pounds as well. Um, and Sarah, uh, sweet girl, uh, young, and she turned her life around. And actually, she's now, um, uh, she just graduated from school. And I think she's uh, either um, not a fitness trainer. She's a, a, a therapist. And it's going to help her, you know, now that she's fitter and she's going to be able to help patients. And they're all amazing people. And um, I'm just blessed to be able to be associated with them. So if you could support them, that we'd really appreciate it too. Yes. Kevin, Andrea, Coral, and Sarah. Yes. And the link, I posted it in the chat, but I'll also, and it's also in the Team Gift Fam under our event for this page, but I'll post it again in Team Gift Fam um, as well. So go vote. Like I said, every day, June twelfth, um, and I really just like thank you. It means so much for you, for to, to me at least, that you give, gave your time to us. We are we're, we're a smaller team. Everybody wanted to hear them talk. They have they've been doing calls almost every night, um, and they they were gracious enough with their time to jump on with us. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait to see you at Summit. We're gonna see you. Everybody that's going to Summit, he's gonna be up on stage with Siggy. Yes. I and, and if you see, if I don't recognize you, I didn't own, have only to Michelle, but if you see me, please stop me, say hi, you know, that's I'm, fine. Please. I'm bad with like recognizing people, but same thing. Um, any, like, and I'll say, I'll speak up as a coach. Like I love when people come up to me and, and introduce themselves and say hi. Um, so, so yeah, if you see him, go give him a hug and tell him how, how, how much his call inspired you. So, um, reading. Yeah, they're just saying thank you, thank you, thank you in the chat. Oh, no problem. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So God bless. Um, good luck, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I should have asked you guys what, what you're going to do with the money if you win. Um, I don't know. One of the things I want to do is uh, we want to convert our garage into a gym because I do everything in my living room right now, and it's not ideal. <laughs> This is life. Uh, this is now. We're not going back. <laughs> no, we're not going back. And and there's a couple other things you know uh, we want to do. But uh, my my son, all of this is going to be graduating soon. So from high school, so you know, college is on our horizon. So and stuff like that. So she love it. that's awesome. And Andrea said she's taking her family to Disney, and we know uh... she's buying drinks. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, I hear my little girl screaming for me too. She should be in bed by now. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for um, for giving up of your busy schedules and being here. And we appreciate you and 
God bless and have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed night. Bye. Right. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Michelle.